2 Samuel, chapter 20, verse 13. Now, it's been troubling times for David. And let me be very careful to say, the trouble upon David here is because of sin. And there are troubles in our lives because of the devil, Job 1 and 2. And there are troubles in, in time because of life itself. And there are troubles in our life because of God. It be God, Satan, sin, or ourselves cause trouble. Or life itself. And that's one of the things we got to figure out. Job never realized or never was told to Job as far as we know that Satan was behind the scenes. David was told by Nathan this was all going to happen. But Dave, David wasn't told that Absalom was going to be killed. He, man, I don't think he was even told it was going to be Absalom. He didn't tell that a son of his was going to rape his daughter. He didn't tell him that he would get rid of Joab. Didn't tell him about Shimei cursing him. He didn't tell him about the Sheba to finish this chapter. Is going to revolt just after Absalom revolted. Here we go again. This life is troubles. Life is not good. You need to rely on God and trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet the Bible says all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Job says as a man is born and a woman is a fire and the sparks are flying upward. Man is born unto trouble. In verse 13, when he was removed out of the highway, this was a Mesa. He's killed by Joab. All the people went on after Joab. Joab's been fired. He's not the commander no more. Now, with that, uh, chapter 20, verse 6, David said to Abishai, now that's Joab's brother, Nowhere does he order Joab. We saw last night, if you look at chapter 20, that Joab's been fired. Joab murders a man because he took over his position by David. Now he steps up to the plate. So in everything that Joab's going to do would be rebellion, though it sounds good. Yes, Sheba was an enemy of David. But David sent out Amasa. Amasa waited too long. David sent out Abishai. And then Joab must be the older of the family or whatever it is. Took his brother and said, listen, I'm in charge now. It's not family relations. It's what the king said. And he went through all the tribes of Israel unto Abel and to Beth Machelah Machelah and all the Barites. And they were gathered together and went also after him. So he's got all these troops. David's in trouble. When the people of the land spark up. And they came and besieged him at Abel of Beth Maccah. Now there's Abel of Beth Maccah. Beth Maccah, what we would look at, that would be like a county. And in that county, here's a city or a town, Abel, in the country of Israel. And they cast up a bank against the city. They're up against Abel. They start building a ramp. It's the best way to describe it. Dirt, rocks, trees, wood, whatever they can find. They want to make a ramp so they can run up and over. This is not an easy job. Because the people in the Abel or any city you're attacking are going to be throwing rocks at you, shooting arrows, anything they can find, fire, oil. They're not just going to say, oh, look how beautiful that ramp is. And it stood in the trench, trench warfare. And all the people that were with Joab battered, that's the only time that word shows up, the wall. And we use the word batter today as a crime, but the only placement of the Bible, the word batter, is they're beating the wall up. They're trying to destroy the wall. They're trying to build this bank. They're trying to get in the city. 
That's a hard word we're looking at right now. It's an army penetration of whatever they can do to get in that city. To throw it down. Men are dying. Men are defending. Men are stepping in where one is falling. There's death all around. Then cried a wise woman out of the city. Hear, hear, say, I pray you unto Joab. Come near hither that I may speak with thee. So uh, over all this attention, here comes a woman. She would be on top of the wall. Here, here. And it would be so funny because my aspect of the public ministry that I have been in, the first thing I would think that, shut up, lady, you're too loud. <laughs> people think that loudness is not in the Bible. This woman had to be loud. There are people screaming. There are people dying. There are fires. There's arrows. There's soldiers. They're singing. They're, they're chanting. They're, you know, marching to a rhythm. To, they're doing everything to hype everybody. For either side. And this woman is able to overshadow the noise of war. I think she was loud. And she's going to preach off that wall. Now she may not preach the gospel. But she's going to preach the salvation of her people. And when he was come near unto her. Now that is a bad spot. Joab. He walks up to the wall. There are people in that wall aiming at the, at the children of Israel. Trying to kill them. Joab is stepped into to be marked. And the only thing that would soon would happen. Maybe and I'm not there. It's not recorded. That when this woman steps up. Everybody in a bell stopped their fighting. I don't know. Or Joab is still a target. And he answered, I am here. I guess he had to be loud too, crawling up to the top of the tower, up to the walls, wherever she was. Then she said unto him, Hear the words of thy handmaid. And he answered, I do hear. I'm listening. Then she spake, saying, There were wont to speak in old time. Saying, here it's the saying, they shall surely ask counsel at Abel. And so they ended the matter. So there was a time that people came to Adele, above, excuse me, and they would come to us to seek some kind of counsel. As likened to the, to the uh, Queen of Sheba, came all the way to Jerusalem to seek Solomon in his wisdom. And the Bible says that Solomon, Job, out wise of all the people and named lands. So Abel would be known as a wise city. Here's a woman of that wise city where people came and said, listen, and this is not a fortune telling. This is not to have tarot cards. This is not, you know, this is your future. Hey, this is what we want to do. And you will see this in the Bible where Baruch went after Deborah to seek advice. Uh, the men in the book of Acts came to Philip and his daughters for advice. The men gathered in the book of Acts for a council. We need to talk about these things. We need to seek God. And here's one of those places that just was known for wise people. And so they ended the matter. Once they came to Abel and they said, listen, this is, this is the plans. This is the ideas. This is the thoughts. Everything we, we discussed. Jesus said, would not a man sit down if he's preparing for a battle? You know, how many people am I going to need? How many people do they have? If a man sits down, he's going to build a tower. Well, how much is it going to cost? Well, where am I going to build this thing? And they would come to Abel and say, okay, here's all our ideas. And they would say, it's a good idea. It's a bad idea. And we saw that council of Israel with, with the oracle of God with Absalom and David. The Bible, even the book of Proverbs says it's wise to seek counselors when you have an idea. And I am one of them that are peaceable and faithful in Israel. I don't cause any troubles, this woman. I'm not a, 
I'm not a criminal. I do what I do. I, I take care of my family. And, you know, thou seekest to destroy a city and a mother in Israel. You're, what are you doing here? You're, you're, what did we do to you, Joab? Why are you fighting us? Why are you trying to kill me? I'm a mother. I'm a mother of Jews. What's your problem? Why will thou swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? The Lord gave us this land. And you're trying to take it away. So the people in Abel have no idea why Job, Joab is doing this. And Joab answered and said, Far be it, far be it from me that I should swallow up or destroy. I'm not here to destroy you. It may look like it. We're trying to get in the city. <laughs> you won't let us in. We have a reason. The matter is not so. But a man of Mount Ephraim, is when we read about Hosea, Sheba, the son of Barakai, by name, gives a name. You ought not name him. Paul does. John did. Has lifted up his hand against the king. Even against David. So, ma'am, we got this man, Sheba. Specifically this man, the son of Barak. He's in your city. And he has raised his hand. He has rebelled against the king. King David, your king. That's why we're here. Deliver him only. If you, he's in your city. If you deliver that man to us, and we will depart from the city. This is exactly why we're here. And the woman said unto Joab, Behold, his head shall be thrown to thee over the wall. Then the woman went unto all the people in her wisdom. She gathers everybody in the city. So the war now has to stop. I don't know if it stopped while she began talking or whatever. But at this moment, she calls all the men. Saying, this is why Joab is attacking us. He says, there's this man named Sheba. Bar Barakai, whatever the name is. He's fighting against David. He's rebelled against David, our king. And Joab wants this man. Now, can you just imagine now, Sheba in this city, the entire city is going to turn against him. And he's a city that's walled. <laughs> And barred, he's not going to escape. And they cut off the head of Sheba, the son of Barakrai, and cast it out to Joab. Now, you got to look at what's going on here. The war is stopped. Israel, Judah are outside the city, you know, pulling their thumbs, talking. You know, Kabos about the battle, what this man did, what that man. Joab's sitting there looking up like, I hope she does what she's supposed to do, because if not, we're getting in there. And holding back his troop. Just wait, hold on. Calm down, let's see what happens. This woman goes up and over the wall. She calls everybody. To, the battle, I would assume, has stopped. She explained to the men of the city and the people of the city, this is, this is why they're here. Boom. Off goes the head of Sheba. And Joab's sitting there, and here comes his head. Ah! Boom. Picks up the head. That's Sheba. Don't need any more identification than that. This is where religions get the idea of beheading. They get it out of the Bible. Beheading is found in the Bible, but our enemies against God's people. Now they call an enemy of their religion. There's no religion here. Here's a man that went against King David and of the country, of the Israelites. I will curse them that cursed you, which Sheba has done. And, and Joab says, listen, you bring... Now look what Joab said. Uh, verse 21. Deliver him only. And I will depart out of the city. Then the woman says his head will be thrown over the wall. That woman's all right. We're going to take off his head. If that man is going against the king, he's not going to live. We will execute judgment for you. And Joab standing outside the gate. Here's his head. 
What better assurance that Joab now has from that woman and from that city <coughs> but the guy's head? He doesn't need attack no more. The guy's dead. Cruel, but effective. <laughs> that guy's never going to attack David again, and Joab has assurance. Now look what happened. They cut off the head of Sheba, the son of Barakai, however you say it, and cast it out to Joab. <laughs> And he, Joab, blew the trumpet, and they retired from the city. All right? He's got the head. Dun, dun, dun. He announced the trumpet. The war is over. Everybody pack up. Everybody go home. I got, here, here's the enemy right here. And they retired from the city. Now, there's a retirement in the Bible. They left the city. Every man to his tent. His occupation, military occupation, in their tent. That still happens today. Men in Afghanistan, of the, of the great modern military we have, they're still dwelling in tents. In Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, the Middle East, you'll find pictures of them still in tents. And Joab returned to Jerusalem unto the king. Now, can you imagine that moment? There's King David. Did you do that? You, you killed Abner. You killed Absalom. He's going to find out about Amasa. <laughs> He's still holding a head. How do you know that? What did David do when he carried when he did the Goliath? He carried a head to Saul. What about when the Saul's son of certain authority over David? What did they do? They slayed him on his bed and brought his head. What did they do with Saul and his sons? They cut off their head and, and prayed it around town. Joab has come before the king. He's not supposed to be there. He's got the head of this man. It's almost like Joab has regained to David because now Joab was over all the hosts of Israel. Did David find out about Amasa? Did David realize Joab killed again? Because we read in verse number 6, David said to Abishai, where did he go? And Joab was over all the hosts of Israel. He's the military captain. He's the commander-in-chief of all the military forces. And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, was over the Cherethites. Here's a man group of people and over the Pelzites. You're in charge of those group of people. Whatever reason. Those people needed somebody over them. And Adoram was over the tribute. There's your tax collector. He's named by name as Matthew was named in the Gospels. Somebody needed to collect taxes in Jerusalem, the city of God. And he's given by name. And Jehoshaphat, this is not the king's later on, the son of Ahelab was a recorder. Now what's that guy do? You know, most of what we read so far of David's life in Samuel would probably have been written by him. He would sit down at David's throne. He would sit down at the table of Joab. He would sit down with military men. He would sit down with people of the, of the, of the castle. He would sit down with the people. He said, all right, tell me what happened. And he'd be the one that recorded. He would be the responsible for the names. He would be responsible even for the gratuities that come in, the taxes that come in, the money and supplies that come in. He records things. He would be the book of numbers. He would be the person who does the, the polls. How many people to this? How many people Joab has? How much Joab done? Where Joab went? Where his men went, divided into the threes, everything would have been recorded by him. He, so he would probably have some part of what we've read, written down by him. And Sheba was scribe. Now what's his job? The scriptures. His job is to say, Sheba, yes. You see the scroll here? Yes. It was accidentally ripped when we opened it up. All right, give it to me. I'll rewrite it. 
and there were strict law, laws about that. And it, you know what? This role is getting tired. It, it's getting old. It's get. Let me take that. Let me rewrite that. And it would be absolute. Make sure you have it down. This job of the scribe would be absolute. And if you go on the internet and look, excuse me, look it up, man, they had special clothes. They had special pens. It says if they made one mistake, they would burn the whole roll and redo it again. There were strict rules with the scribe. David would work with him. And if the law said, we don't know if David did, but the law said that the king was to write his own copy of the law. He would sit down with the scribe and say, okay, I need this scroll to write now. And he would look over and say, oh, David, no, you got to do it over. You didn't do that right. You forgot that. We don't know if David and Solomon or anybody copied the law like the law said. And Sheba was scribe, and Zadok and Abiathar, here's those two wonderful men, were the priests. Those were in charge of the Ark of the Covenant. Those were charge of the tabernacle, the tent. They would advise David. <laughs> they would advise the people. They would be in charge over all the priests. They would make sure that the morning and even sacrifice was there. They would make sure the fire was on the altar. They make sure that the candles were taken care of. Make sure the incense was, was burning properly. Make sure nobody was not to go where they were not supposed to be going. Make sure that all the offerings, that's their job. And Ira, also the Jerite, Jerite, was a chief ruler about David. So here's a man in charge of what's going on in David's life. What, what is this man? This man is likened to Joseph. This man was likened to Jacob. They were in charge of, of, of a man's house. Ponether and uh, Laban. He would make sure everything in David's house was supplied and full and needed everything. That there would be nothing lacking. He would make rules even concerning David. He's an important man in the kingdom.